I am Edward Rees Harry. I'm a proud Welshman and I am the latest generation of my family of the village of Penclouth on the North Gower coast. Penclouth developed over a period of time in a quite a unique way. So we're on the north coast of the Gower Peninsula and we have a very, we did have a very important aspect to this part of the world and that is the water. If we roll the clock back, Penclouth became quite an important centre for coal, copper and tin mining, all within the one mile. From this tiny little village, we shipped all of those elements across the world. And if you couple the Industrial Revolution, because we also know historically that Wales in particular, when it went through the Industrial Revolution, alongside that came a religious revolution and um, religious revival several times over. That meant that um, going to church or chapel was considered to be normal and absolutely very trendy. In fact, if you weren't a member of a church or chapel, there was something probably not quite right with you and you were, you were deemed as quite suspicious. So the buildings that were here went through several periods of growth and spurts and in fact had their own facelifts and were rebuilt to, ha to make sure they could house all the people to fit in them. In Wales, we went through a period, several periods of religious revival where we wanted to break out of patterns and structures and wanted to be much more free to worship. And out of that, several other denominations broke through or were born here. Primarily, um, the Congregationalist denomination or the Independent denomination in Wales is an organisation which is free of any pattern uh, and each individual church is governed by its own congregation so that there's no overseeing council like there is in the Church of England or Church of Wales. In Welsh they are known as the Anibanwyr or the Independents. That's why all of those buildings appeared in such a very small space. The village was visited by gentry. Lady Barham um, travelled by boat from Bristol to Penclouth um, on a tour and whilst she was touring Gower she built and resourced with her own money several church buildings one of which was Bethel in Penclouth. When she came along, this is um, 1813, she was appalled at the lawlessness and the lack of godliness in Penclouth when she arrived. It was apparently quite wild. We all grew up in the centres of religion, um, pervading our lives. We were, we were committed, whether we realised it, it or not, um, and we would, we would be there to worship together, but also to meet together and to be together. The, the churches and religious buildings in this village were central to practically all activities other than schooling. It was the most important thing in all our lives. What's left of it is not necessarily what I recognise. The decision was made in Bethel to close the doors of the building. Not, not to close the church, but to close the building because the repairs estimated were beyond the budget. And so what that congregation has done is move into the Sunday school room that was built as a separate building next door on the same hill, same complex, and they've sold the building now I can say that, and I can say it objectively, but from a subjective point of view, I find that incredibly difficult because I feel like my soul is attached to that building because of the amount of time that I spent in that building with family members and non-family members. That was an intrinsic part of my childhood and my life. 
I grew up there. Um, I learned how to speak publicly there. I learned how to perform there. I learned how to compose there. I was the organist there um, from the age of 14. I learned how to conduct there. That's now my job. Um, I became uh, one of the elders there, deacon there. But because the building of Bethel is sold where I grew up, because it's sold and it will shortly become housing, uh, that is something that I find incredibly difficult to process as a person with so much invested in, in it historically. I miss being in there. I miss being able to hear the organ that I used to play. Um, it's, it's very difficult and I also know, skipping to Tabernacle for example, that the, the, the congregation there is also very small now and their service is no longer take place in the main building, they take place in the Sunday school which is at the back of the same building. And so I'm watching these centres of activity, centres of life, centres of socialisation, meeting people, having fun, laughing, singing together, you know, it takes me a second to be back in the days when those buildings were full and you couldn't get a seat, and they house over a thousand people um, on days of singing festivals, um, Gmanfa Ghanis, where we would sing all day, and, um, you know, wonderful times of the whole village coming together in these buildings, cramming in, and now it's reduced to either closing or being shut away in small rooms. And it's, that's very difficult to process it's the same pattern that's happening across Wales, sadly. I learnt that I'm part, and always was, and always will be, part of a context here, that my existence is not single or singular, that I have grown up uh, with a backdrop of a culture, um, a backdrop of belief, a backdrop of history, local history, family history, generations of people, um, and I've learned that all of those things feed in to making me who I am today. And the older that I have become, the more I have appreciated how fortunate I was to be brought up safely in an environment that had a belief system, that was secure, that was friendly, supportive, taught you things um, about life. And when I look at the village today, it makes me incredibly sad that there might be people who live in this village who will never know that, who may never know that all of that existed. And it wasn't very long ago, but it's gone. It's lost and it shouldn't be lost. And yet I feel like there are many people who will never know it was there. Will they be remembered? Will it all be remembered? Will will the, the concerts uh, in, the, in all of the church buildings across the village, which were, which were always sold out, always, packed to the brim, you couldn't get a seat. Will they be remembered? Will the music making be remembered? The, the singing festivals, the Whitson walks where all the churches came together and paraded through the village and then went back to their own buildings to have a tea? Will any of that be remembered? Or has it gone for good?